So here's the wheel mold that we're going to be using. Uh, this will be a 3D printed part out of nylon. This is my first attempt at designing a uh, wheel hub. Uh, this will be using a hex shaft to transfer torque from the uh, gearbox. And the idea behind this is that you need to design a mold, a hub um, that captures the poured uh, polyurethane rubber. So when you're designing these, uh, you want to make sure that there's no way for the rubber to fall off the wheel. So if you can imagine uh, a bunch of rubber will be uh, stuck to this, you don't want the rubber to fall off in any direction. So if you look at this from the side, you don't want the rubber to go off this way, you don't want it to go this way, um, and you don't want the rubber to pull off this way. So the rubber has to be retained in every orientation, and that's done with all these features that I have on here. So I got this, um, this little curved piece here. This stops the rubber from pulling up. And then I have some other features like this sidewall here, and then kind of this overhang area here. This stops the rubber from pulling off either to the left or to the right. It's also designed to be 3D printed without supports. So that's another reason why it looks kind of funky. Um, if this was to be machined out of aluminum or something, it would probably look a lot different. Um, but because it's 3D printed without supports, um, it kind of looks this way, uh, just to simplify printing, uh, try to make it so the prints don't fail. Um, so that is the uh, wheel. Over here is the whole assembly for the mold. Um, so I'm using the this uh, hex shaft uh, is actually going to be, which is going to be going through the wheel. The hex shaft I'm using to align all the parts together. And uh, these are also all 3D printed. Um, so the idea is um, this all gets clamped together using a bunch of clamps. And then you pour the resin into these holes here. And then um, 48 hours later, you'll have a wheel. Um, I added, this is the second version of the wheel mold that I've done. Um, some of the, the improvements from the previous version is I added these holes here. Um, these holes are meant to have a quarter 20 screw thread into it. Um, it's a little bit undersized. So the idea was you would put a quarter 20 screw in here. Um, it would create threads as you screw it in. And then that would help pop. It would press up against the nylon core and it would pop the mold apart. Um, but what I found is when using the mold release spray, um, it actually comes apart pretty easily. So I didn't actually have to use these holes, um, but I guess it doesn't really hurt too much. What I ended up relying on was I put these little holes here. These are just tiny little little holes to put a screwdriver in, and that helps pry the mold apart. So pretty much just using these little these tabs here, that was enough to make the mold release when I used the mold spray. Um, but I guess if for whatever reason it didn't come apart, then I could try to use these holes here, but I never actually had to do that. So that is the, um, so that's all the parts of the mold. Um, these all get 3D printed. So let's go ahead and print those parts out and start making the wheel. Here it is guys, we just took the second wheel out of the mold and it came out a lot, uh, it would released a lot better and uh, that's of course because we used the, the official universal mold released from SmoothOn so I definitely recommend uh, using that. Uh, and we were able to do this without destroying the mold which is great so that will save a lot of plastic in the future and print time. Um, some things that are a little bit different is there's a lot of, I guess, a lot more like overflow. I don't know if it's because I didn't clamp the mold tight enough, but uh, it kind of bled 
over the mold a little bit. It's not a big deal because I'll be able to clean that up like with just some sandpaper likely. Um, so I just have to do a little post-processing now. I gotta clean up the, the edges with some snippers, uh, remove these little um, these pieces that stick out with some snippers. And, um, but other than that, it looks, it looks really good. Um, this is my first attempt at doing multicolors. Uh, it started off as just pure yellow, and then I drizzled some blue into it, which turned it green. I think I'm going to try some different things going forward. It still looks pretty cool, but I think I can do some other ways of injecting the other colors in there to get a more, I don't know, just different design. I think every wheel is going to look a little bit different in the future, just for fun. I'm just going to have some fun with the colors, but um, overall, I think it looks pretty good. And we're done. So the wheel is finished. So this is the second wheel uh, that we did all the colors, crazy colors with, and it turned out really nice. Um, we also used the mold release spray, the official mold release spray by Smooth On. And that allowed the wheel to come out of the mold without destroying the mold, which is great. So we'll save lots of plastic and print time in the future. Um, just so you know, this is what the old wheel looked like. This was solid water jet cut polyurethane, very heavy. Um, not, not great. Um, you can see this had the, the original shaft went in here with a keyway, but if you want to save some weight, you want to leverage the, uh, hex shaft. So we got the hex shaft here. Um, and then I got all the hardware that goes along with the hex shaft, like hex bearings. We got the hex bearing and then a hex, uh, shaft collar. Um, and that allows you to run the custom wheel without, um, any kind of additional, um, hardware or any fancy hardware like um, one of these hubs. So that saves some weight, uh, simplifies things a little bit, um, but it looks pretty good. So we went for the first wheel, we did uh, 60A, uh, this one we did 50. Um, so there's there's what we used. And I think the 50, the 50 seems probably better. It's a little softer. Um, not really sure how much it'll compress. So what I'm gonna have to do is now bolt these to the robot and uh, see if I have the right kind of clearance. Um, the robot that this is going on needs to have very, very uh, specific wheel sizes or else the weapon will smash into the ground. So hopefully this is the right size and it compresses just enough so that the weapon is perfectly uh, parallel to the floor, um, but we'll see how that goes. So uh, overall, really happy with how the new wheels came out and I'll definitely be doing this in the future. I'll probably change up the mold design a little bit. There's a couple things I'd like to do a little bit differently, but overall really happy. Um, no reason why not to continue doing this. And um, next time we'll do even more crazy colors. So uh, yeah.